Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, this is going to be part of the uh, Resurrection series. Uh, Resurrections in the Bible. This is leading up to the where Jesus went for three days. We haven't gotten there yet, but uh, the verse in question is 1 Peter 3.19. Speaking of Christ when he died and where he went for three days, we read, By which also he, Christ, he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Now, most people think of spirits and they think of angels, rightly so. However, let's take a look at spirits from another angle. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23, Paul writes, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, uh, not wholly as in sanctified, but rather wholly as in complete. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul writes that we have a spirit a soul, and a body. Now, we have a earthly, fleshly body, and I believe the spirit is what gives the body life. However, we need to be merged with uh, born, born anew or born again of the Holy Spirit. We await the resurrection of a heavenly body, but the soul exists uh, with or without the body. And we're going to take a look at that. So keep that in mind. In Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said, and fear not them which kill the body, kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And that would be God the Father, right? In Matthew 26, 41, Jesus says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The Spirit, our Spirit, not the Holy Spirit, the Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Paul writes in Ephesians 4.4, 4, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Galatians 5 and verse 16. Paul writes, This I say then, walk in the spirit, not in our spirit, walk in the Holy Spirit. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of of the flesh. James 2.26. Uh, do you know who James was? James had a mother. Her name was Mary. He had a father whose name was Joseph. Gee, I wonder who that, I wonder who else shared those fam, that, that, that family. Hmm? James 2.6. I'm sorry, 2.26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead also. See, works are proof of our faith or what we believe. But if you do good works, there are actually people who say that you're trying to earn your salvation. Does an apple tree become an apple tree because it produces apples? Oh, that tree is producing apples, so it's trying to be an apple tree. No. 
An apple tree puts out apples because it is an apple tree. Good works follow faith. You don't do good works to be saved or to prove your faith. Good works are proof of your faith. Uh, and those are people that argue this point, they call it lordship salvation. Oh, you're trying to earn your salvation by doing good works. See, they want you to be a fruitless tree. And Jesus said that a fruitless tree would be cut down and cast into the fire. See, they want you to have no fruit on your tree. Because they belong to the devil and they have no they have no discernment. Or they are devil kids. I don't know. Maybe both. In 1 John 5, 8. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. When Jesus was crucified on the cross and the soldier took a spear and pierced it into his side. What came out? Blood and water. And the only time blood, uh, water is going to separate from the blood is in death. Because the heart is not pumping, mixing the blood and the water. They separate out. That's how you know when they stuck the spear into their, his side, he was dead. So water and blood came out. And the human body is mostly water. We're only a number of pounds of chemicals when you take all the water out. So, all right. Let's go take a look at spirits. Now, mankind has a spirit of the flesh. And when you're born again of the spirit of the Holy Spirit of the Lord, becoming one, hopefully, you are given another spirit. So let's take a look at something. In Luke 4.18, Jesus said this in the synagogue or the temple. And he was quoting the book of, I believe it was Isaiah. Yes, it's Isaiah. Um, well, I'm pretty sure it's Isaiah. Well, but let's read it. Luke 4.18. The Spirit, capital S, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath appointed, anointed me, not appointed, anointed, as in the pouring out of oil, which was the symbolism of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel, the good news, to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Who were the captives? They were all the Old Testament saints that died and went to hell. But there are two compartments in hell. We will cover that later. Abraham's bosom, where there's no flames. And then there's the flame part. I guess you could say, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, where there's fire, there's smoke. So, uh... The captives, the Old Testament saints, I guess you could call them, were in the non-smoking section to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, physically blind or spiritually blind. Double meaning there. To set at liberty them that are bruised. In 1 Peter 3.19, we, you know, we read it again. We're going to read it again. 
by which also he, Christ, went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Hell was a prison, people, and we'll probably go into that more later. But think about it. There are actually those that will tell you that Christ went to hell to preach to the fallen angels that are in reserved un, in chains of darkness. Does that sound right to you? No. Hell was created for the devil and his angels, and I did that in a previous study in this series. The fallen angels knew full well what they were doing when they rebelled against God, and there was a war in heaven, and they tried to kill God. What happens in a war? Death. You don't play chess, checkers, or tiddlywinks when there's a war. No, they tried to kill God. God the Father. Maybe Christ. I don't know. I wasn't there. At least not in this body I wasn't there. Isaiah 11.2 And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. In Hebrews 1 and verse 14, Are they not all ministering spirits? Um... Uh, are they talking about angels here? Or they are are they talking about uh humans, Adam kind? Let's take a look at this. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Since when do angels preach? to the Adamites who are heirs of salvation. I don't think it's angels here. I think uh, they're talking about Adam kind who are born again, who are evangelists as ministering spirits. But that's just my interpretation. And if I'm wrong, I'm not trying to deceive anybody on purpose. In Psalms 104.4, 104 verse 4, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. Now, sometimes spirits are angels, no doubt about it. How about Proverbs 16 and verse 2? All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Now, they're talking about man here. They're not talking about angels. So, it looks like he's weighing the actions of the spirit of man. But that's my guess. And I don't speak as the Pope. I'm not infallible like some people think they are. Numbers 27 and 16. Let the Lord... The God of the spirits of all flesh, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. So flesh has a spirit. And then he mentions a man. Hmm. See, man is has a body, a soul, and a spirit. And God made us in his image. God the Father, which would be the soul, I'm guessing. The Holy Spirit. And then who had a body? Jesus was God in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 So, we were made in God's image. We are three parts. God is in three parts. And then people will say, well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. Well, the word Bible is not in the Bible either. But, you know, Trinity, T-R-I, try. T-R-I, try. Not attempting to do something, but three. Um, 
You ever heard of a tricycle? It has three wheels. Three, tri. Uh, there was a, what they called a triplane. The Ford Motor Company made one. It had three engines. So one in the middle and one on each wing. Tri. Uh, you've heard of uh, bi, B-I. Bi means two and tri means three. Hebrews 12 and verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? And live? How about 1 John 4 and verse 1? Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Are angels false prophets? I tend to believe this is referring to men. But that's just my guess. Hebrews 1.7 And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, so angels are spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. So maybe in this case, the angels are God's ministers of flame of fire. I don't know. Hebrews 12, 23. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, the firstborn, written in heaven in the book of life people is your name written in the book of life from the foundation of the world i pray that mine is to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to god the judge of all and to the spirits and to the spirits of just men made perfect and to the spirits of just men made perfect. So sometimes angels are called spirits, but sometimes the spirits are just men who are made perfect. 1 Corinthians 14, 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Wow. Wow. Number 1622. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth or angry with all the congregation? I believe this was when one of the guys stole some gold. But you'd have to read the whole chapter. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit, your whole spirit and soul and body, body, soul and spirit, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are three parts. I know I've mentioned it before, but we're going to take it a look at it again. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. How can you divide the soul and the spirit? Ah, uh, this is some kind of a mystery that I do not feel worthy to even attempt to understand, because I don't. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Wow. In Romans 8.16, Paul writes, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, the Holy Spirit beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. 
Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In the book of Revelation, chapter 6, and verse 9, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, the altar of God, I saw under the altar the souls, souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried, the souls, they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And guess what? The Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you, you know, when you die, that's it. You know, you don't know nothing. I call that soul sleep. Does that sound like soul is sleeping? They're crying out, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, till thou avenge our blood upon those that, you know, killed us? Well, that's the Bob translation i guess i don't know something like that but you get the idea all right let's go to galatians chapter 5 and verse 17 paul writes for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Boy, I can attest to that. Galatians 6 and verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting, I'm sorry, life everlasting. So if you sow to the flesh, corruption, so to the Spirit, life everlasting. 1 Corinthians 16, 18, for they have acknowledged, I'm sorry, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, acknowledge ye them that are such. 1 Corinthians 14, 15. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding. You don't want to hear me singing, that's for darn sure. Matthew 26, 14. Jesus was in the garden with the apostles before his arrest and crucifixion. He said, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Ephesians 4.4 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Galatians 5.16 This I say then, walk in the spirit, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You want to walk in the letter of the law or in the Spirit of the law? Acts 2 and verse 31. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul, whose soul? Christ's soul. Let's read that again. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul, his soul, was not left in hell. What? Christ's soul was in hell? But it wasn't left there. 
What? Yeah. Read it. King James Bible, Acts chapter 2, verse 31. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Wow. So where did Christ go for three days and three nights? Well, that might be the next Bible study I do. I'm not sure yet, but I'm, I'm trying to get there. James 4 and verse 5. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? The Holy Spirit does not have us lust for envy. Ephesians 3 and verse 16. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Not the outer man, the inner man. The outer man's your flesh. The inner man is your soul and spirit. Jesus speaking in John chapter 3 and verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, some people will tell you all that water means you got to be baptized. you got to have your flesh dipped in water. But is that what it really means? Uh, when Jesus' side was pierced with the spear at his crucifixion, what came out? Water and blood, right? Uh, what about a woman when she's about ready to give birth? What do they say? My water broke. Oh, yeah. Baby's coming, people. I tend to believe that's what it's talking about. You're born once of water, the flesh, but then you have to be born of the Spirit. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You have to be born twice, people. Once in the flesh, once of the Spirit. And then you got a whole group of people say, oh, you got to be baptized in water to be saved. I don't think so. When the thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me this day when thou rem uh, when you come into your kingdom, or something along those lines, Jesus said, thou shalt be with me this day in paradise. Did that guy get baptized in water before he died on the cross? No. But he's going to be with Christ. Well, the one the one thief will. The other one's going to the other place, the smoking section. 1 Corinthians 5.5. 5. Uh, this one was messing with his father's wife. I don't believe it was his mother. I think it was a stepmother, but... Uh, and the church was not doing anything about it. But Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5.5, 5, To deliver such an one unto Satan. Deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the Spirit may, that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Wow. Wow. Now, when Jesus, after his resurrection, came to see the apostles, in Luke 24, 39, he said, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And we're talking about an angel. I don't think angels have flesh and bones. And if you want to read the entire chapter of Luke 24, you can. But Jesus was telling his apostles, Hold, handle me, touch me. And you can feel I have flesh and bones. 
Oh, uh, but that's going to come back into play when I do the resurrection. 1 Corinthians 6.20 For ye are bought with a price. Yeah, the blood of Christ. Oh boy, what a we were bought, bought and paid for, people. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Oof. Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Romans 6 and verse, uh, I'm sorry, Romans 7 and verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. Not the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. Romans 15 and verse 19. You ever notice all the Hebrew roots people? Oh, they always want to take you back to the letter of the law. Always. You got to keep the Sabbath. You got to be circumcised. That's what they are always, you know, they don't, they don't preach. They don't, most of them don't even preach Jesus. They preach that Yahuwah, whoever that is. My, two, my New Testament was written in Greek. I don't know who Yahuwah is. My Bible says Yahuwah nowhere. Maybe they have another Bible. I don't know. Yeah, the uh, complete Jewish Bible by Stern, which uh, tells you that the morning star in Isaiah 14 fell from heaven and is going down to the pit of hell. But in Revelation 22, Jesus says he's the morning star. They remove the name Lucifer. And they insert a title of Christ, thus making Jesus the one that fell from heaven, the morning star. That's their Yahuwah. Yeah, they await their Messiah. Their Messiah is coming after they build the new temple, which is probably what this whole war with Iran is all about, so that they can build their temple for their Messiah, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast. And you watch, the whole world's going to follow after the beast. And a lot of people that think they're going to fly away in the preacher of rapture are either going to get their heads cut off for their witness of Jesus and for the testimony, or they're going to deny Jesus. And Jesus said, if you deny me before men, he said, he will deny you before the Father and his angels. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Christ died for you. Will you die for him? I pray that I have the strength. If I am called to do that, that I have the strength to do what I'm called to do by the Lord. Romans 15, 19. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about Unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. 1 Timothy 3.16, one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is God and he was made flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. James 5.20 Let him know, now this is talking about people that do evangelism, that win people to Christ. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner 
from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Do you know that if you preach to somebody and they're converted and they come to Christ, you've saved a soul from death and that's going to hide a bunch of sins of yours come the day of judgment. And I pray that I've brought a few people to Christ, but I'm not an evangelism. I'm not an evangelist. I'm a teacher. I believe that's my spiritual gift. Teachers are to take babies in Christ. An evangelist takes somebody and wins them to Christ. Then they become a baby in Christ. But then a teacher takes a babe in Christ and teaches them and hopefully turns that babe into a soldier that we need soldiers. We don't need babies. An army of babies is worthless. We need soldiers. Satan has his army. God has his army. 1 Peter 1.22, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. What? Yeah, spirit and soul, not the same. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. 1 Peter 3 and verse 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in the which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, of great price. Romans 8.14 For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, Jesus is called the only begotten Son of God. Adam was called the Son of God. Angels in Job 38 are called sons of God. But when we are led by the Spirit of God, we become the sons of God. James 2.26 For as this body without the Spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. 1 Peter 4.14 if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, reproach, what does that mean? Uh, basically insulted and persecuted. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. And we're not talking about gibberish, people. Colossians 2, 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And I pray that I am serving the living God by teaching this Bible stuff. You know, when I was in high school, uh, there was a point in high school when if you'd have told me I would be in ministry doing Bible studies, I'd have probably cussed you out. I mean, I never would have dreamed Never, never, never. Oh, boy. My, how things 
uh, life throws you a curveball. But, uh, you know, hopefully you come home. And isn't that the point of baseball? To make it home? You know, when I first went into high school, I believed. But I threw it away, trying to live the life that I wanted to live. So I thought. But I uh, came home. Praise the Lord. He almost had to kill me to get my attention. But uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, people. You know, I got hit on the interstate. Interstate 95. I was rear-ended by a car on a motorcycle. How many people do you know that are rear-ended on an interstate highway by a car on a motorcycle and live to talk about it? The Lord had his hand on me that night. I should have died. But he had other plans. And praise the Lord, I was in a doctor's office and a couple of Bible thumpers were, uh, I was talking to them about the one world government coming and they were like, oh yeah, that's in the Bible. I rolled my eyes and I'm like, oh no, a couple of Bible thumpers. Oh no. But they put up with me, took an empty, uh, took an envelope out of their uh, this lady's purse. It was a husband and a wife. Wrote a bunch of Bible verses down from memory. Handed it to me. And I was in Orlando and I went to a, a motel, hotel, whatever. Gideon King James Bible was there and I looked up all the verses. And that was the night I realized the one world, coming one world government was in the Bible. It was prophesied thousands of years ago. And that was the night I knew that I was wrong when I walked away from the Lord. Boy, I'll tell you what, what a night. I don't think I'll ever forget that night. I just hope that I'm uh, worthy of his calling. All right, Ephesians 2.2. 2. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, I can relate to that according to the prince of the power of the air. Uh, TV and radio waves, the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That was me. That was me. Luke eleven thirteen. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Lord, give me thy Holy Spirit, please. First Peter 3.18 For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, having put to death in the flesh, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. 1 Peter 1 and verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. 1 Corinthians 2.14, you know why people can't understand the Bible if they're not of the Lord? Here you go. But the natural man, the flesh, but the natural man receiveth not, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. John 14.17, even the spirit of truth, whom the Lord cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. 
Romans 8.13 For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye live through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. What does mortify mean? Have you ever heard of a mortician or a morgue? It has reference to dead. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, kill, dead, the deeds of the body, ye shall live. John 15, 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth. This is Christ speaking to the apostles. The Comforter is the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, who he will send from the Father. 1 Peter verse, chapter 1 and verse 2. Elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Romans 11.8 According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. Now the two witnesses of God are mentioned here that confront the false prophet and they're killed. Revelation 11, 11, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. I don't know if I'll live to see all this but I think there are people living today that will live to see this happen. I, I do. But I could be wrong. Maybe they're just now being born. I don't know. John 4.23 Jesus But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth for the Father seeketh such to worship him. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. Do you know there's a whole group of people that call Jesus cursed? They curse Jesus and they say he is cursed. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And I proclaim that Jesus is the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.3 3, For as much as ye have manifestedly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Revelation 4.13 And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works, and their works do follow them. Let's close this out. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Somebody send the Hebrew Roots people a, a, a memo about uh, circumcision and Sabbath keeping, will you? On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. With that in mind, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.